All right, so here's the result. The derivative of sine is cosine, and derivative of cosine is the negative sine, and we're going to add those to our list of the derivatives of basic functions. Okay, so we have a whole repertoire of <laughs> basic functions that we can take the derivative of, like a power function, a, an exponential function, a logarithm, and now we can take the derivative of sine and cosine. Now one thing to note, it gets kind of uh, lost sometimes, but this is for x in radians, okay? We have to have the input to the sine and cosine to be, be in radians, okay? So that's important to remember, although it sometimes gets, gets lost, people forget that, okay, I have to be in radians for this to work. All right, so let's do some practicing with um, applying these uh, the derivatives of sine and cosine, all right? so. Uh, we, we have all of our usual rules, right? And so we know how to take the derivative of the sum or difference of functions, the constant multiple of a function, and we've got our chain rule, and we got our product rule and our quotient rule, okay? We're gonna have, we have to apply all of these things. Um, and we're just adding a, now just a new function, uh, two new functions that um, we know the derivative of, the sine and cosine. All right, so let's start out with this one. We have uh, h of t is equal to 5 sine of t minus 8 cosine of t. All right, so this is just a, these are, this is just a difference um, of two functions, and, and they're constant multiples of the sine and cosine functions. So um, h of t, h prime of t, okay, we take the derivative of it, right? So we have to indicate h prime of t. Um, we're just get, we've got a constant multiple of the sine, right? So the derivative of the constant multiple of the sine is just a constant multiple of the derivative, right? The derivative of sine is cosine. So this first term is just five cosine of t. All right, and then we have minus eight, and then times the cosine um, of t, but we want the derivative of cosine, which this is the negative sine. All right, so because I have a minus here. And I'm taking this times a minus sine of t. I'm just going to make it positive. So maybe I should maybe just make sure that, uh, let me just back that up a little bit. Because I could write it this way. 8 times the negative sine of t. Or I guess it's not, yeah, it's t. That's right. <laughs> it's t. All right. So be careful when you write this. If you write it this way, without the parentheses, it can look like 8 minus sine of t. That's just not what you want. Okay. It's negative 8 times negative sine of t. All right, so put the parentheses in. Um, otherwise, you might get yourself messed up. Or what you can do is just write it down. Um, when you see that, that it's going to be um, the negative sine of t, what you can do is just multiply the negative 8 times the negative 1 and get a positive 8, and then, um, and then write the sine of t. Very simple uh, simplification there that might save you some headache <laughs> of, of, of then going back and look at your, if you have to use this function for something, then, um, you know, you go back and look at it and you think, oh, was, did I mean 8 minus sine of t or did I mean um, 8 times negative sine of t? That's, so just be careful there. All right, so why don't you try the next one and, um, and pause the video and, and then you can restart it to uh, check your answer. All right, so there's a derivative of that function. All right, the so we're taking the derivative of the first term here is just a constant. Derivative of a constant is zero. And then we have negative three times the sine of x. Derivative of the sine of x is cosine of x, okay? And then we have just a power function here. All right, so um, that the derivative of that is just um, 3x squared, okay? So be careful here too. This, you know, we don't have any parentheses. There's, there's a difference between, if I had parentheses here, that would be the sign of all of that, but I don't have parentheses there, so just be careful. Um, notice that that uh, plus x cubed is separate, so it's really the sign of just the x and then plus a power function. All right, let's try one that requires the chain rule here. All right, so now we have the sign of x or t squared. Right, that g of x is e or g of t is equal to the sine of t squared. So we have an outside function and an inside function. The outside function is the sine function, right? I'm just I could write it as sine of v, right? Where v is equal to t squared. So this is the outside function, 
And inside that is what's, you know, what's being fed in, what the input, the input to the sign function is um, t squared. So I would call this the inside function, right? Because it's the input function to the sign function. All right, so this requires a chain rule. So g prime of t is equal to the derivative of the outside function. All right, so the derivative of sine is cosine. And I'm just going to leave the inside function as it is, right? Just leave it as it is, and then multiply times the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 2t. All right? So here's another one. Try the chain rule on, on part d. All right, did you get it right? <laughs> um, all right, so I have 5 times the derivative of cosine. Right, so it's really cosine of that 2x. That whole 2x is the input to the cosine function. Okay, so I could break, break this down into, you know, uh, u is equal to 5 cosine of v, where v is equal to 2x. Okay, so my outside function is this cosine. And remember, the derivative of cosine is the negative sine. Okay, so I've got 5 and then times negative sine, but I put my negative sign out here in front. Um, and then I leave the inside function alone and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, now I would probably put um, parentheses <laughs> around the 2x in this case because you want to make sure you're not multiplying the input to the, t you know, that it's clear that you're not multiplying the input to sine by 2. You're in, in you're um, multiplying the output of sine by 2. All right, so I might rewrite this as negative 10 sine of 2x. Okay, so you kind of have to be careful how you write this so you don't confuse yourself if you have to actually use the result. <laughs> All right, let's take another look at another one. All right, so of course we have to try one with the product rule. All right, so here we have the product rule. Um, we have a first we have the first and the second function. I always kind of think of it as the first and the second. So my first function is just the t function, and I'm multiplying that by, um, oops, by uh, the sine of t. Okay, so I think of, so the derivative of a product is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, so this is what I'm calling my first, and this is what I'm calling the second. All right. So let's call this d a d t. All right, I'm computing the derivative. All right, so I'm going to take the derivative of the first. This is just a power function. You can think of it as t to the first power. Right, the derivative of t is just one, and then times the second, which is sine of t, plus the first, which is just t, t to the one power. Um, times the derivative of the second, right? Derivative of the sine is cosine of t. And that's it, that's all there is to it, all right? The next one is a quotient rule problem. So uh, you can pause your video if you wanna try this on your own, otherwise I'll go ahead and go through it. So um, we've, got a, we've got a numerator and a denominator. I always think of them as low and high, right? High and low. So my high function, which is the numerator, is the cosine of t, and my low function is uh, t squared, right? I call this high and this low. Because then I, I know that the rule, the quotient rule, and I want to compute dr dt, right? It's low d high, right? So low d high. d high means the derivative of cosine, which is the negative sign. So I'm going to put the negative out front here, um, just so I, so I don't have like times the negative um, in here. It just makes it a little more clear. So the derivative of cosine is a negative sign, right? Minus high d low. So we're going to have the cosine of t, and then d low, again, I'm kind of probably going to need to make it separate. I'll just put it in parentheses, 2t, right? That's the derivative of t squared. All over low squared, right? So t squared squared becomes t to the fourth, all right? All right, let's take a look at a couple of more complicated. <laughs> well, I mean, these are just ones that, these are ones where you've got 
you got to apply the chain rule a couple of times. So, um, you know, I could identify the outside function in this case as just being the square root function, right? Square root of v, where v is equal to 1 plus uh, sine of t squared. Okay, so it's the t that's squared in this case. So I'm putting parentheses around it to make it clear. It's not the sine of, it's not the square of the sine, it's the square of the t only. It's a big difference. So I want to find uh, dp dt. All right. So it's a chain rule. So the derivative of the square root function is going to be 1 half, because right, because this is really the same as v to the 1 half power so I can just use the power rule on it and I'm and it's um, this V I'm just gonna write it and leave it as it is right leave your inside function alone so sine of t squared sine of t squared I'll put parentheses around it All right and that's gonna be to the negative one-half power All right that's the derivative of the first and now um, we're gonna t we're gonna take the derivative of sorry this is the derivative of the outside function and leaving the inside function alone, and then times the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so derivative of 1 is 0, and then uh, we have the derivative of sine is going to be cosine, cosine of t squared, all right, but that, <laughs> that sine function has an inside function, all right, so we had to apply the chain rule again, so I'm going to take that result and multiply it by 2t, all right, now, that's kind of ugly. You can leave it like that as long as you've, you know, uh, been clear about uh, what's multiplied by what. I can simplify this a little bit, but in most cases, I'm not necessarily going to have you simplify things unless there's a reason to. But I'm going to go ahead and simplify, simplify this a little bit just so it just looks better. <laughs> so I have this t, and I have cosine t squared, and then this um, 1 plus sine of t squared is to the negative one half power. So I'm going to make that, uh, that negative puts it in the denominator. All right, so I can just rewrite this as cosine of t squared and then um, all over one plus sine of t squared to the one half power, right, making it, putting if I put it in the denominator, but I could also just write it as a square root of one plus sine of t squared. Okay, that's just a little bit simpler, but you could leave it as it is. <laughs> in fact, that's preferable in a lot of cases, just because um, unless there's a reason to, you know, you're just more likely to make algebra mistakes if you're simplifying it. All right, one more here. It involves a chain rule. I encourage you to pause the video and try this on your own um, and then restart it uh, if you want to see the solution. All right, so again, we have an inside function with another inside function. All right. So um, the outside function is this natural log function. So I'm going to say u is equal to the natural log of v, where v is equal to the cosine of 3x to the fourth. Okay, And I'm going to apply the chain rule, right? because it, it, the input to the logarithm is a cosine function. right? So this cosine is an inside function. It's the input function. All right, so um, we, we're going to calculate dz dx, all right? And, okay, the derivative of the logarithm is just 1 over v, but v is the cosine of um, 3x to the fourth, okay? So I'm just going to leave the inside function alone when I take the derivative of the outside function. And then I've got to take that times the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so I'm going to actually put this in the square brackets. The derivative of cosine is a negative sign. So I'm going to put it in square brackets so it's clear that I'm multiplying by the negative, um, the negative sign of 3x to the fourth. All right, I want to make it clear that it's multiplying. I'm not subtracting it. I'm multiplying by the negative here. Okay. And then, because that ha also has an inside function, which is 3x to the fourth, I need to multiply by the uh, derivative of that inside function. So 12x cubed. Okay. 
Now, I could simplify this a little bit. In fact, this one simplifies pretty nicely. Again, I don't necessarily want you to simplify, but I see, you know, I've, I have sine of 3x to the fourth over cosine of 3x to the fourth, right? So I can, I can actually make that into the tangent. And then I can bring this, uh, I can combine this negative sign with the 12x. So I end up with 12x cubed. It's combining this negative on the sign with the 12x cubed. And then I can turn the sine of 3x to the fourth over cosine of 3x to the fourth into the tangent of uh, 3x to the fourth. Okay. All right. That's enough practice for now, and I'll meet you in the next video for the next example.